Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Roxanne Beltron. I am a professor uh, at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and I consider myself a marine ecologist, which means I'm trying to figure out what's happening in terms of animals and plants in the open ocean. Elephant seals are crazy awesome. They're big. They're big marine mammals. So they're mammals just like us. They breathe air. They have pups that they have to feed milk in order to get nice and big. And they're marine, which means they rely on resources in the ocean in order to make a living. So these elephant seals are incredible athletes. You wouldn't know it from seeing them on the beach because when they're on the beach, they're lazy, they're resting, they're sleeping, they're trying to recuperate from these really long migrations that they have out to the open ocean. When they're on those migrations, which is for something like 10 months out of the year, the seals are diving continuously down to thousands of feet beneath the ocean surface in order to find fish and squid to eat so they can get nice and fat and then they can come back to the beach, give birth to pups, and then nurse those pups. And they do the same thing over and over every year. One of the really cool things about elephant seals is that male seals and female seals are super different. So what I just described to you is about the female seals. They get pregnant and then they go off to these migrations, they gain lots of fat, and then they come back to the beach, give birth and nurse those pups. The males are so much different. They're about four times the size of the females and they have really different annual cycles. So instead of doing really long seven month migrations to the middle of the open ocean, the males are doing trips that are a little bit shorter and they go up to Alaska and to the coast of um, Canada and Washington and Oregon in order to feed closer to shore on benthic fish and other organisms. So males and females are pretty different. When you see them on the beach, you can tell the males apart from the females because they're so big and they have these huge noses like elephants, which gives the species their name. And then if you come visit the beaches of California during the breeding season, when the male and female seals are all together, you can see the males are doing these crazy behaviors where they're defending groups of females called harems so they can get access to those females and hopefully become the dads of those females pups the next year. One of the things that my team does is we rely on small instruments attached to the seals that collect data for us. These are what we call satellite tags or time depth recorders, anything that's about the size of a cell phone, a little bit bigger. And we can carefully glue those tags to the seals. The seals are so big, they don't even notice or mind the tags are on them. And then those tags collect lots of data on where the seals are going, how deep they're diving, what they're eating, how much they're eating, how successful they are at finding that food, and even things about the environment, like how hot it is or how light or dark it is, or even oceanographic features, like how productive the ocean is. And so all of these things can be recorded on these really small instruments and the seals go out on their foraging trips. The tags are recording the whole time. And then when the seals come back to the beach, we can retrieve the instruments and download the data and we get all sorts of novel information about um, seal behavior and oceanographic conditions and even ocean health that we could use to answer questions about basic science and applied science like conservation that we really wouldn't be able to answer using any other traditional scientific tools. So the seals are an amazing research partner, biologgers are the perfect research tool, and my team puts them together in order to answer really important questions about the health of the open ocean and about basic processes that are happening out there. One of the most interesting things we've learned recently is that the open ocean is a pretty variable place. It's really hard for us to measure. Like I will probably go the rest of my life without actually taking a boat to the open ocean where these seals are going. I'll probably never go there, which is crazy. But the seals have brought us back so much really useful information from that area. And they've showed us, for example, that in some years they're really successful at finding fish to eat and other years it's a lot harder for them. So there's about a 30% difference in how much fat they're able to gain every year that they're out on these foraging trips. That suggests that the open ocean is a lot more variable than we thought beforehand. Imagine a seal going out on a seventh month migration and sometimes it gains 300 kilograms and sometimes it gains 200 kilograms. That's the difference between you gaining like eight pounds and you gaining like 12 pounds. It's a big difference. And so we've been able to learn a lot about how variable the ocean environment is. And we can use that to understand how we might be able to protect it a little bit better. 
In terms of my involvement with the SEALs and how I got interested in them in the first place, um, I've always been a really curious person and I was really curious as a kid. I grew up in San Diego, dipping my toes into the Pacific Ocean and wondering why jellyfish were there sometimes and stingrays were there sometimes. And sometimes it was really warm and sometimes it was really cold in the ocean. And sometimes the water was really clear and sometimes it wasn't. So I grew up really asking questions about why the ocean was the way it was. And I think when I got to go to college and choose what I wanted to study, it was natural for me to want to learn the tools and techniques and connections to people so that I could answer more and more questions about the ocean. And what I've learned is that we know a lot about the coastal ocean, like where I grew up in San Diego, but a lot less about far, far offshore in these places that are actually not part of any country. They're um, outside of what we call the exclusive economic zone. So really it's everyone in the world's responsibility to collectively conserve these places. And that makes it a really challenging problem, not only to know what's happening out there, but also what we can do to protect it. So um, I think the early inspiration of dipping my toes into the salty ocean is what made me want to study and protect the ocean. And through a lot of training at a lot of amazing institutions with a lot of amazing people, I've been able to really solidify that passion and sort of channel it towards trying to conserve the marine environment using the data brought back by elephant seals through instruments attached to them in order to help understand and preserve our planet.